Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Pash On Podcast. Let's get started with your host, Brian Pash. Hi, this is Brian Pash, and welcome to an exciting podcast interview. I'm here with Megan Horton, VP of Product at Client Command, and we're going to be talking about her workshop that she'll be giving at MRC, the power of audiences and a whole new data set to help dealers with their big stops marketing strategy. Megan, welcome to the show. Thank you, Brian, for having me back. Excited to uh, talk with y'all today. So at our digital marketing strategies conference, it was in June, you had a packed room as people were trying to really get a handle on the power of audiences. They've never had, say, a platform where they could ingest audiences, deploy marketing against audiences, measure those audiences. And now as more and more dealers are either turning to your platform as their CDP or using your company as an audience, as a service, dealers are starting to wake up about, well, instead of spraying and praying, being more tactical, intentional. Let's start at a high level. 100%. What, what was some of the feedback you got in Austin? You know, when we talk about buying an audience, we're talking about a list of consumers, but it's dynamic. It's not stale. It's not something created 90 days ago. So at a very high level, why should dealers be focused on audiences and not static lists? Absolutely. So that's a great question. You know, so often I think it's so easy to go through the motion of these are the people that I engage with. This is my first party data. Meta's got an audience. Google's got an audience. It's got to be the best that's out there. And so as we're running through all the things that have to be done each and every month to hit the numbers by the OEM, or the group that we're a part of is challenging us with some new metric, that looking outside to better understand what opportunity there is to engage with the right consumers almost is a second thought, if even a thought Mm. at all, when really it should be one of the the first things that's considered. If you are targeting and engaging with the wrong people, you're not going to get the right results in the metrics that you're looking to achieve. So if you aren't thinking about audience right now and the who behind all of your marketing efforts, it's, it's a question that really should be a part of your every day of who am I engaging with? Why am I engaging with them? And is it the right people to engage with? You know, that's super important because for years, dealers like, hey, I'm using Google's in-market shopper audience. I'm using Facebook's in-market shopper audience. There was never any transparency, right? You could never see who those people were. You just had a trust that Google knew who was shopping for a car. Very different than on your platform. When a dealer is buying your audience, these are people um, with an address. They know that they're in the zip codes or PMA that they want to target. And you allow that audience to be deployed via email or direct mail or use in social. Tell me a little bit about how you describe to dealers um, buying a, a, a marketing audience, like say running a display campaign on Google, Facebook, running that same campaign on an active shopper audience. Yeah, I think one of the things is if people have questions and they're like, Megan, the active shopper network sounds too good to be true, right? How can you tell me who those people are, what they're actively shopping for? You say it's on not only my site, but also off the site. Run them side by side, put them up against one another. And that mm. comparison of results is going to be mind blowing to clients. And what you'll really see is that most often when you're doing this spray and pray concept, and there's I mean, tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, depending on the market that you're engaging with, that list of active shoppers is going to be significantly smaller. The metrics from earlier this year in June, when we shared them, that in market kind of predictive base from Amazon, Google, Meta was roughly around 20, 20 and a half percent of people who were actually shopping seen within the active shopper network. So, I mean, 80% of those people are considered a waste in terms of what you're spending your dollars on. So it's really, again, insightful to compare the two and see how many of those individuals are actually shopping right now versus some kind of propensity score that may be out there. And that's really important because that's one of the takeaways that people were mentioning in your workshop at DMSC. Um, Dealers have to remember, marketing professionals have to remember that Google and Facebook are built 
to advertise, to make money. And so in your zip code radius, if there's not enough people, they'll add people, believe me. They may be, hey, they visited um, cars.com once, but they really weren't intense. Or, hey, they went to an OEM site. Maybe they were looking at the new Corvette, but were they really shopping? I mean, you really don't know the criteria that Google uses for in-market shop or, or Google or anyone else, right. by the way. And yet when a dealer looks at your audience counts, they're much lower. Mm -hmm. And that's because for someone to be activated as an in-market shopper, it's just not one signal. It's not one casual event. Can you explain a little bit about that, that dealers will have less people to market to, but those people are more actively in the market right now. So dollar for dollar, would you rather spend a thousand dollars knowing only 20% are there, or would you rather take that thousand and increase the frequency of the people that are actively shopping? Uh, how do you describe that difference? Because it's a big difference, right? Some of these audience lists are five times what you're seeing in the market. What's the criteria that makes the active shopper network so powerful? Absolutely. And so your question around, should I use this massive volume or should I engage with this smaller to hit with more frequency? It's definitely the latter of the two. And the reason for that is the active shopper network looks at the consumer behavior online. And you said it perfectly in that it's not one event that identifies somebody as an active shopper. We are watching the behaviors every single day of a consumer across the entire internet, not just our dealer partner sites, but what is it that that consumer is doing within their, their website behavior every single day? So are they going to a dealer site? Are they also then visiting a trading calculator? Are they also looking for a vehicle value on KBB because they want to compare what's going on within their market, what's available to them, rather than going to dealer A, B, C, D's website and having to look through their specific SRPs or VDPs that they have. And so every single one of those behaviors has an algorithm and a score behind the scenes that ultimately defines a consumer who's an active shopper from one to 100. We also have a pre-scoring system that they haven't quite given that intensity enough for us to say, yes, a dealer should know about Brian Pesh. So once you hit that score of one, you're considered an eligibility of an active shopper. And so the other great thing about that score variance between one and 100 is it enables dealers to focus on either top funnel, bottom funnel, middle mm -hmm. middle funnel. And so it gives you that range, but we know that that person has exhibited the behaviors and the time on site required through our years and years of perfecting this ever-changing algorithm based on consumer behavior and more information that's available to the consumer online today. Well, you also shared in June, and you're going to be coming in November with some new data. Um, I've been really excited to see how you're actually doing some advertising with OEM brands, like mm -hmm. how many Stellantis shoppers yes. are in market right now, or how many Toyota shoppers at a, at a larger scale as you look in the active shopper network people have been talking about affordability being the biggest problem evs are paperweights in a lot of uh, dealer lots hybrid selling like hotcakes um what can you tell dealers who are listening in uh, is there any trends that are changing say from june and now in the fall yeah so the trends and the things that we're seeing the numbers that i shared in june we have continued to monitor and we did rerun those in preparation for the conference coming up in November. And folks left in June kind of with their jaws on the floor, not realizing, again, how much waste there was uh, within the audiences they were typically engaging with. So I can't wait to reshare those numbers with what they are now, as well as some new ones that are that are out there. But one of the things we're seeing at the OEM level is so frequently, I think we've all been uh, programmed, if you will, to this particular model is competitive to this particular model. And that's always going to be the case, right? A midsize sedan is always going to be shopping for another midsize sedan 
within, you know, each of the brands and across brands and what is it, what's more affordable, what's local to me, you know, where can I get the best deal? But in actuality, as we are looking at the OEM level, what's happening is a vehicle that you would consider to be maybe in the second slot of consideration or third slot or fourth slot of what a consumer is considering. Brian, they are varying so wildly. We were taking a look recently uh, for some data specifically for uh, some Nissan stores. And really, in one of the, the vehicle classes we were looking at, the number one competitor was a Jeep Grand Cherokee across consumers. Now, a sedan for a Nissan, would somebody on paper consider that a Jeep Grand Cherokee was going to be that, you know, number one in consideration against it? Definitely not. Absolutely not. And so if we're only focusing on that of like area owners or, you know, somebody who owns my brand or maybe the the smart competitive brand that you think is going to be the right one to engage with, you're missing out on massive opportunity to talk with the folks who actually may be looking at something completely different that you wouldn't talk to them before. Listen, I'm just going to use my personal, uh, you know, shopping behavior. I love a bigger car. I love a full size SUV. Um, my current SUV is getting a little old now. And, uh, you know, I'm renting today a Hyundai Santa Fe. I never was in the Santa Fe before, but man, it has a lot of room. I've been doing some moving. I bought some TVs. I got a 75 inch TV box into that car. Um, people might say, well, he's never bought a, Hyundai Santa Fe before a Hyundai SUV, but I, I could buy a Ford. I could buy a Chevy. I could buy a Hyundai. Um, and I could buy a luxury vehicle or I could buy something stripped down there. And this is where audience management comes into play. Every consumer forget about modeling. Modeling has its general purposes in scale. But if you have the ability to track individual consumers, you have the ability then to deliver a more personalized message. So based on what they're doing on the dealer's website, here's the key, what they're doing off the dealer's website will allow dealers to see, hey, this customer is our customer. This is what he's been shopping for. Or, hey, this customer, they live in our zone. They should be buying for us and they're out shopping for a brand that we sell. Either case... I want dealers to understand if you have an advanced marketing platform, whether you're using client command soup to nuts, or if you're buying audiences, you really have to start pivoting instead of this idea of of what's my upgrade path based on models, but what's the behavior of that consumer showing? And, you know, I think that's really what 2025 is going to be about. Dealers are starting to get a handle of their data, managing first-party data, enhancing with third-party data, but the marketing activation partners have been falling far behind because they never had email campaigns made for one-to-one marketing. They never had direct mail campaigns made for one-to-one marketing. But this is the direction we're going. When you think of November and MRC, we're talking about advanced things. Things that are not talked about in detail at other conferences. We're talking about identity resolution, which client come in as a pioneer. We're talking about customer data platforms, which client come in is a pioneer. We're talking about audience management, which now you have audience as a service. You can be the audience provider or the manager. Um, but one area that no one's been really talking about too much is fixed ops. And I know you have some big exciting um, news to share. How has Client Command decided to pivot to help fixed ops directors and C-suite executives looking to have that same intelligence, but for service? Absolutely. Now, we have been working really, really hard over the last several months to take the Active Shopper Network to an, the next level. And we focus so heavily on make model, to your point, what brand is somebody considering, what body style, what fuel type is important, but there's a huge, huge opportunity in, in fixed stops. And how can you make sure not only are you continuing to get that market penetration, for what the OEM desires, but how can you make sure that you're continuing to engage with people who maybe have declined 
service, right? But they still need that service to take place on their vehicle. If somebody that's recently moved to the area and is online shopping for where they want to get their next, you know, oil change from, even though going to get an oil change, you can go anywhere and find find a place around the corner to go get right. that done. It's still something that people will go online and search for, or even if there's something bigger, right? Your check engine light is on. And I'm one of those. I know nothing about the maintenance of my vehicle other than that I need to drive to the Chrysler store down the street when something is is appearing off. But there is an opportunity now to not just engage with your first party data every single month through client command or with what the OEM has sent to you for people who currently own a Toyota or a Honda or fill in the blank for your brand. So the Active Shopper Network is now fully monitoring and enabling our dealer partners to utilize the Active Shopper Shopper Network for parts and service shoppers as well. So people who are online looking for some of those big ticket items when it comes to maintaining the vehicle that they have that most are keeping for so much longer than they ever have. So that is now available. I'm very, very excited about it. Uh, I can't wait to to share some of the results of that as well. Yeah. So dealers, you may not understand the, the real potential here. Let's talk about tires. Dealers know they're running a tire campaign. But you don't know when your customers are out looking at other tire center websites. Active Shopper Network would know. You don't know when your customers are out on competitors' websites shopping for service. To be able to get a signal that your existing customer is has a potential of defecting, that's an immediate opportunity to get a direct mail piece, an email piece, or even a phone call just as a service reminder. Now let's think about growing market share. Um, I don't care what you think your DMS uh, accuracy is, but about 40% of all the data in your DMS is no longer accurate, meaning you don't know the vehicle owner at this present time, which means the vehicles that you're marketing to through your DMS data are being ignored because they're owned by someone else. So imagine being able to see the owners of vehicles that you service in the market activated. So you're a Toyota dealer. You didn't sell them a Toyota, so they're not in your DMS. But you could see when Toyota owners are out shopping for service and being able to market to these. So you've heard of conquest audiences before. But again, they've been very opaque really didn't understand how these audiences were being created. Again, take your service conquest list, whatever you've been using recently or historically, and then compare that head to head with a audience from client command. And that service activation, that service conquest can be through email, direct mail, or whatever media channel you want. Um, pushing those people into a social media retargeting audience. This is an exciting time. Megan, when you think about November and the Modern Retailing Conference, what's one thing you want to tease dealers with? Something that you're seeing with new clients, you're seeing with where your data scientists have been working hard to kind of quantify the value of the Active Shopper Network Um, just to make it easier for dealers to understand the power of the audience. Remember, uh, Jonathan, at the beginning of the year, said 2024 is the year of the audience. I agree with them. What's one thing you're excited about sharing in November? What I'm excited about sharing is how much money our dealers are saving by utilizing the audiences that are focused on people actively shopping. Not only saving, Brian, but by getting in front of that consumer at the right time with the right message, because we know that they're shopping, their gross profits that they're seeing are roughly 36% higher than a consumer that may have been in one of these in-market predictive or geo-based or whatever it may be, wherever the audiences are being bought from, dealers are saving money and they're making more money with the audiences that are, are made up of active shoppers. Well, that's music to your ears because I know most dealers are on a cost cutting yes. mandate and they're looking to do more with less and um, spending less money, focusing on active shoppers, cutting out waste makes sense in these very, very challenging environments. Megan, if a dealer isn't going to the Modern Retailing Conference, November 17, 18, 19 in Palm Beach, I know they're missing out. 
I know they're missing spending time with you to help them with strategy, but if they wanted to have a call right away, what's the best place for them to learn about the Active Shopper Network? Yeah, absolutely. So either place to learn about, you can either email uh, our sales team at sales at clientcommand.com or me personally, Megan H at clientcommand.com. I am happy to talk one-on-one have an understanding of your current audience strategy, help you be able to see what opportunity you have and and we'll run through it. I would recommend for those, Brian, that are coming to the conference here in the next couple of weeks, bring your current budgets that you have right now. Where are you investing money in audience right now? Is it based on your DMS? Is it based on your CRM? Are you buying it third party from some other platform or some other entity? How much are you spending? How many impressions are you desiring with that budget? Because that will help you in that workshop to, at that moment, recalculate what your opportunity is to help with some of that savings. Again, as everybody is trying to cut costs as we head into this part of the year, as much as everyone's trying to sell as much as they can, there's also opportunity to reallocate and right size where some of those dollars are going to and really plan for a successful start to 2025. I love that. Megan, thank you so much for your time today. I'm excited for your workshop. People love your clarity and your experience really in automotive retail. So it's really refreshing that you're really there to teach. And of course, dealers should know that the conference sells out every year. Only dealer and OEM tickets are available at this point. It's November 17, 18, 19 at the beautiful O. Hotel and Spa in Palm Beach, Florida. I was just at the hotel this weekend. The storm did not impact the beach or the hotel. So everything is fantastic. So please go to modernretailingconference.com. Book your tickets. More importantly, book your hotel with the hotel booking link, which is a discounted rate. And then we'll see you there. And if this is the first time you've listened to one of my podcasts, there are dozens of interviews leading up to the Modern Retailing Conference on my podcast channel. So make sure you take the time to listen to all of those speakers so you can plan better to make the most of your time out of the dealership. Megan, thanks for being a supporter of dealer education. I look forward to seeing you in November. And this is the year of the audience. So let's get ready to talk about it in November in Palm Beach. Thanks again.